Welcome to another life-changing broadcast of the Order of Melchizedek television show. The only show that I know of on television that is dedicated to teaching the body of Christ about the Melchizedek priesthood of Jesus Christ. Because yes, the truth of the matter is we are all part of the royal priesthood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, which is, which is called in the book of Hebrews, the Order of Melchizedek. But all we have been dealing with the miracles of Jesus because he's the high priest. So this, we are focusing on the miracles of Jesus because it's been an amazing study. And then we've been seeing miracles as we talk about the miracles of Jesus. Now listen, I'm gonna come with, I believe part, what will be part seven of this amazing uh, uh, series. But I want you to watch this announcement and I'll be right back to download this powerful revelation. When Mary is in that crowd, Padova is crying for them to choose Jesus over Barabbas. But she doesn't understand the mystery of redemption. That Jesus did not come to the world to die a normal death. Because a normal death does not do anything for you and I. There should not be any effect of death on any part of your life. The actual sign of Pentecost is the power of authorized utterance at a higher level where your words pierce the hearts of people and they can't shake the impression of what you created. Every one of us have a choice. You can choose blessing, you can choose cursing, you can choose life, you can choose death. Either one, every one of us have an opportunity to make a choice. If you're up against principalities and powers, in contra de principados, and Satan is knocking you around, y el enemigo te está dando contra ti, put praise on in your car. Pon alabanza. Put praise on Por, in your house. You see, God wants you to know today that He wants to pull you somewhere that maybe you don't know what it looks like, but it looks a whole lot better than wherever you at right now. God never changes His mind. He just may take you out of a spot that you should have been in that would, would have been easier for you, but he'll always put you right exactly where you're supposed to be. God wants you to know it's not by your might, it's not by your power, but your spirit is gonna raise up in you and he's gonna take you right through that mountain. Every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the midst of defilement, in the midst of evil, God has a remnant people of Samuels that have been raised in the midst of debauchery, have been raised in the midst of a house that is unclean and impure, and many of you are the Samuels that are being raised up, that your words will not fall on the ground. Saints, I am so excited that you are joining us on another life-changing broadcast with your host, Dr. Francis Miles, on the Order of Melchizedek television show. We are the only TV show that I know of that is dedicated to teaching the body of Yeshua, the, the Melchizedek priesthood of Jesus. Do you know that you are part of that Order of Melchizedek? Yes, you are. You know, because Jesus is our royal high priest, according to Hebrews chapter 5, 6, 7, all that. Amen. Praise God. But listen, we are not going into that right now, but we want to study the miracles of our high priest Jesus on the show. We've been dealing with the miracles of Jesus. It's been amazing. But before I go into that teaching, again, I beseech you by the tender message of God. You just saw the announcement. 
I want you to pray about coming and joining us for King's Conference 2022, downtown Atlanta. It's beautiful. And for anybody flying from anybody in the America, Atlanta is the best place to buy to fly into because it's a direct flight for most places because it is such a big hub for airlines all over the world. And if you cannot be there physically, live stream the event, it's going to be mind-boggling. And by the way, for the hotel, we have last year's prices for today's times. Now, that's a big deal. Anybody living in America knows the level of inflation is such that, oh, the hotels are up, food is up, gas is up. But I'm telling you, the hotel rate at the beautiful Sheraton Hotel, downtown Atlanta, is last year's prices. We locked it in for you. But they are going very fast. Get them. And we're going to have an amazing time of the God encounter. Amen. Now, the miracle of Jesus we're about to study today is really appropriate for the times we are living in where the world all of a sudden is being, uh, uh, the world is right now being challenged, being challenged by supply chains and their food shortages such that some believers that I know are panicking about the issue of food. So they are stock storing up. Now, there's nothing wrong with storing up like Joseph did, but don't do it from a place of fear because fear cannot be the driving technology for the child of God behind anything you do because the Bible says fear has a bondage and whosoever fears is not perfected in the love of God. But when Joseph did it, he did not... Uh, he did not hold food out of fear. He was preserving the food from a place of revelation. That's a difference. So whatever you do, make sure you do it from a place of revelation. Which brings me to this point. That if you live in the kingdom, you have nothing to worry about anyway. Whether you store food or don't store food, I can tell you this. That the Lord God is going to take care of his own. You are living in the kingdom. That means you are living under an economy that's recession proof. Okay, and even though there will be, there will be uh, uh, tremors in the economy, in the global economy, the truth of the matter is if, you, if we keep believing everything Jesus said, that we're living in the kingdom, that, 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 that our lives are more uh, important than that of a sparrow, then we have to believe that God is going to make a way. So for me, this story of the miracle multiplication that Jesus did to feed 5,000 people remains to me one of the most astounding miracles of Jesus and declared his superiority over the issue of provision. So we can put the issue of provision to rest, which is a thing that keeps most people up at night. So let's go into it. John chapter 6. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee. I'm very excited about that, that because I'm going to be in Israel and I've been to the Sea of Galilee and I'm going to see it again uh, in September, uh, my wife and I are going to be having Yom Kippur. We're going to be having our time, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, sorry, the Feast of Tabernacles in Jerusalem. So I'm very excited about being in Jerusalem because uh, I've been locked out since the COVID. But now, thank God, we, the, the COVID is behind us. Then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that this may eat? But this he said to test him before he himself knew what he would do. Why would Jesus do this? Because he's trying to show his disciples what is circumventing the release of the supernatural power of God in their life. Because he asked him, where, 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 can, we get, uh, where can we get the money to buy the bread? It's not because he sure needed money, because Philip was in the money system. He saw everything of provision through money. If I have money, I can get it done. And many of you, that's where you are stuck. You know, because you think if I got money, then I got it. I can buy this, I can do this, and I can do this. So you are trapped in the buying system of men and don't understand there is a supernatural channel of supply 
in the kingdom that can circumvent the normal systems of supply and do a better job taking care of you and I in our time of need. This is why this miracle of Jesus is so powerful. He says, where shall we buy bread that this may eat? But this is said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. You know, there was a time when there was a revival of, uh, there was that, um, it was very fashionable. People would have blessed that would say, WWJD, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Listen, Jesus knows what to do. He was testing P, uh, Philip because he wanted to bring out of him what he needed to kill so he could become a better apostle post, post the resurrection because the, Yeshua knew these are going to be my guys when I'm no longer here. I'm going to kill whatever is killing them from being real supernatural men. This is amazing to me. And then, and then Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one, or, or every one of them may have a little. This is, what, this is what he thinks. See, he's caught up in the buying system. So he calculates the money, maybe talk to Judas. You know, after whatever was left, whatever was left over in the purse, after Judas took some of it. You know, he says, what, 200 denarii is what we have. You know, we, we, unless we have to, 200 denarii is all we've got. Even if we had to send somebody to go and buy some bread, look at this crowd, over 5,000 people. You know, and some of these people, they eat for five people. My God, who's got, they, I mean, there wouldn't be enough for them to have a little. There will not be. This is the mentality of Philip. There will not even be enough. So since I'm telling you, if you get stuck in the buying system and don't understand there's another dimension of supernatural supply, the enemy will wear you out. He will make sure that you, he will, he will, he will make you spend your last dollar and then drive you crazy with stress because you don't see any way of provision, supernaturally speaking, because you are so addicted to the buying system. And Jesus is, is just shaking his head. Oh, boy, help me. This is going to be my apostle. You know, but that's what he's caught up. One of his other disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, says to him, there is a boy here. Now, he's, now he's a little bit spiritual, but he's also, uh, he's also limited. He's about to see a miracle of Jesus that do shatter records on the issue of provision and turn them around as apostles. I don't know who I'm talking to, but there's somebody right now, you don't even know where your, mount, your house rent is going to come from, from this month. And I hear God saying, God saying, if you just lift your hands and begin to thank him right now, take a praise break. Forget about me. Take a praise break right now. You are going to say, God, provide, do a, provide a miracle. God says your rent will be paid. Yes, your mortgage will be paid. God, God is already God, God is already working it out even as we speak. I see you on a phone call with somebody you haven't talked to for a while, and they're going to be telling you, God told me to call you because I've been holding this money for you. God wanted me to give this to I'm telling you, saints, there is a realm of supernatural provision when we operate through the miracles of Jesus. This was one of them. So Andrew comes on the scene. He says, he says, he says there is a boy. Here, who has five belly loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? Now, Philip is caught up in the money system. That's what blocks him. Andrew has got another problem. He's caught up. He's, he's got the, the, the spiritual disease some of us have where we underestimate the power of the seed when it's given to God. The power of the seed when it's given to God. So Jesus is like, is, is, Andrew, do you know what you're talking about? Did I not try to teach you about this? When I told you about the master seed, the smallest seed in creation is the master seed, and yet produces one of the largest trees. You, you, you mean you, you don't understand what I'm trying to show you? If the boy's got a seed, we can use the seed. Now, 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 Andrew is getting closer to the kingdom system because the kingdom system uses seed to turn things around. But the problem is he despises the size of the seed. He said, you know what? 
if we are to distribute, because he thought the seed is what you distribute. But the Lord is about to show him, he said, listen, in the kingdom, seed is not what distri you, you distribute, it's what you plant. The harvest from the seed is what you distribute. But I'm going to show you how, it, how to get it done. And so, this is a powerful, I tell you, since I just get so, so excited about this, because I really believe we're living in a time when we need to be reminded that we serve a God who can take our little if we give it back to him in thanksgiving and do miracles with it, that you look back and say, I don't know how, how I did it because, because I, knew I'd, when, when I knew June 1st, I knew whatever, when the month started that I had more month, I had more month than money, but yet the month is over. I'm in the second month and all the bills are paid. We're still living in the house. What happened? Because the gap is Jesus showing up miraculously. And you realize, okay, it couldn't be your job because your job paycheck left more month than it could cover. But yet you're in the second month because of God. Listen, I'll be right back to continue this powerful message. And I've written a powerful book that I believe will change your life. My first prayer book. After many years of study, and looking at human phenomenon and praying for people in healing and deliverance, this book has finally come together. The book is loaded, my friend, with dangerous prayers. Dangerous prayers because any prayer that works for you is a dangerous prayer to the devil. Well, this book is loaded with 36 different types of prayers on 36 different types of evil altars we have identified that many people deal with around the world. The name of the book is Dangerous Prayers from the Courts of Heaven that Destroy Evil Altars. For more information on this book, visit at DangerousPrayersBook.org and order your copy today at DangerousPrayersBook.org. And as a TV offer to our viewers, for a donation of $35 or more, we will send you Dr. Francis Miles' life-changing book as our appreciation for sawing into this ministry. Since I'm telling you, I am so excited about this message because I really believe there are many of you that needed, needed to hear the word of the Lord. We need to know that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Lord Jesus Christ, is not going to let you fall through the cracks. He's going to make sure that you and that child are fed. He's going to make sure that you and your family are taken care of. Yes, yes, he will. You better believe it. Don't ask how are you so confident because, man, I'm coming from such a poor background. I mean, now, I mean, I used to hate it that I came from such a poor background, you know, that we went through, you know, we, we, that my father went through bankruptcy and we lost everything and then I ended up living with a, an alcoholic uncle, you know, was very stingy, you know, and so poverty really just came upon me like a bandit. And, but I'm now thankful that it did, I, that I experienced that because to, if you would have told me I would be here, able to afford to be on television and do the things we do, I would have thought you're crazy. I'm trying to tell somebody out there, Jesus is a supernatural provider. And even as we are talking, supernatural provision is being released into your life. I want you to receive this. Release your faith. It's not by accident that this is what I'm talking about and you happen to be on the other side of the television screen. It's not by accident. I don't believe that. So let's continue. Verse 10. Then Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was so much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. Why would just do this? Because since when you want God to provide, when you want the miracle of provision, you have to take inventory of what you need to feed. See, because you need to know the size of your faith you're going to need. Okay? Obviously, if your family's got 20 people in it, your level of faith is going to be different for somebody who's got two people. Because your level of feeding is different. Sit, make them sit down. Know the number. Don't just guess. I want to know the number. What are we dealing with? Because true faith does not hide away from facts. 
True faith is actually built from fact. 5,000 people, great. So now I know the kind of miracle I need from the kingdom of God for provision. I can't ask for the miracle that feeds 3,000 people. We'll fall short. There's 5,000 people. Make them sit down. And Jesus took the loaves. My God, look at this. He took the boy's seed because the boy was able to give up his seed. My God. He took the loaves, or they did the loaves, and when he had given thanks. Man, this miracle of Jesus is interesting. I want to believe that the reason many of us are really walking through dry spells of provision is because we spend more time complaining than giving thanks with what we have. He gave thanks. There is something about thanking God. Because there's nothing about you God doesn't even know already. He knows you are short. But when you begin to thank God, when he knows you are short, I mean, I, mean, I, I can see God said, oh, that's my child. Come on now. I mean, that's some faith right there. Because I know how little this is for what's needed. But he gave thanks. He, he gave thanks. He, then he distributed to the disciples. Somewhere between giving thanks, a miracle happened. Where, the, the, where, where, where all of a sudden, God removed the spirit of limitation in the loaf of bread and the spirit of limitation out of the fish. Because that's the God, how did you do this? He said to me, Francis, the, when the bread began to multiply, I took the word stop in it. it, didn't, it the bread did not know when to stop. The fish not know when. You see, the only reason why we stop is because they stop in us. You can't, you can't stop unless they stop in you. They took that out of the fish. They took that out of the bread and it just kept multiplying after he gave thanks. I'm telling you what. Whatever you have in your hand, if you can say, God, this is what we have. Lord, instead of me mumbling and complaining, I'm complaining my, my job is not paying me enough, that's not going to help me. Lord, this is, a, this is what I got. I got $2,000, the bills in the house, everything else comes to, comes to $3,000. I'm with thousand dollars short, but I'm not. But I could complain, I could freak out, or I could do what Jesus did. I could learn from the Master, because everything Jesus did was for our, for us and our children's children. I'm gonna take the two thousand dollars from my job, and I'm gonna thank God and say, God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. That we, I thank you, God, for this. Okay. I thank you, Lord, for the, the, the. I thank you, Lord, that I can even make two. I thank you, Lord, for what I have. I thank you, Lord, that you are. I thank you, Lord, that you are my provider, not this check. In other words, you use the check that is not enough to cover your whole month as a foundation to have a praise break. To point to God and say, God, <laughs> this check is good, but you know what's better than this check? What you are capable of doing. And so that's what Jesus does. He gives thanks because the, God, the boy was willing to give us seed. And disciples to the, and then uh, he, gave, he gave thanks and distributed them to the disciples. And the disciples to those sitting down and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. And so when they were filled, his disciple, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so nothing is lost. Therefore, they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five belly loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. Man, there were men with amazing appetites in the crowd. You know, you know, you, you, you know, you know those people. You got them in your family too. You know, and guess what? They ate until they couldn't eat no more because Jesus had performed an astounding miracle. He showed us his miracles are not limited to blind eyes opening, the deaf ears being unstopped. He wants us to understand I can even do miracle in areas that affect you differently. Because not all of us are blind. Not all of us are deaf. Not all of us have got cancer. But we all want to eat. This, there's nothing more common to human experience than the desire to eat. We all eat. Even the sick eat. The healthy eat. So, as a ma so on the scale of miracles, I put this miracle right at the top. Why? Because it deals with what we all deal with. The desire to see provision break out in our life. 
So right now, I feel an action from God to pray for everybody as believing God to make up what is lacking in your life right now. And some of you, God may tell you to sow a seed into this ministry or another ministry. Remember, for whatever he tells you to do, do it and watch God move in miraculous ways. So Father, right now, I pray for the people that are listening to me, your sons and daughters. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name, I give you thank. I thank you, Lord, that you are providing right now, that supernatural provision is released, that the mantle, the anointing for things to increase has been released over their life. I declare and decree, Father, that you begin to provide. Provide jobs that will brought their man. Provide uh, resources they never even counted on coming through. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I thank you. Show them your mighty power in the realm and dimension of provision. For the Bible says you are the God who makes a way in the desert. You even put a table for me in the midst of my enemies. Lord, I thank you and I give you the praise and the glory for the miracles of provision that are being released right now in Jesus' name. Saints, as I close the broadcast, I want to encourage you to come to our website, francismiles.com, and testify about what is happening. I want to know about your miracle. Until next time, is Dr. Francis Mao saying shalom, shalom. I'll see you on the next broadcast. Amen. Can you imagine shooting yourself in the foot? But how many times do we do it? How many times uh, did people that loved us tell us, please don't go into business with her or with him? And we did it anyway, and they stole the shirt even on our back. We lose everything. It's called an evil altar of self-sabotage. And there is actually a demonic entity in the demonic world that operates like that. I don't, that thought what in those moments when you are supposed to make decisions to preserve yourself so that, that are good for yourself, you end up making decisions that end up hurting you and your family. That prayer is available. It's a long prayer, so it can't fit on this TV show. But if you go to my YouTube channel and my Facebook page, Francis Mouse International is my YouTube channel. Please subscribe while you are there. And then if you love Facebook, then you in Facebook simply search for Dr. Francis Mouse. Go to my public page and you'll find this powerful, dynamic teaching and prayer on uprooting out of your life the evil altar of self-sabotage. So that from this day, you never sabotage yourself again. That you'll be able to rescue yourself and your destiny from traps the enemy has set that you can see coming. That's sabotage. But we're going to break that by the speed of God. So go to my social media pages.